it bounces once. If I call two, it bounces twice. If I call three, it bounces three times. Cool? Ready to try that? Zero. Very cooperative. One. Three. This is the fun part. Right? <laughs> three. Then you give them a zero. Awesome. So why the four of you do that? You two be the number. <laughs> and you two are the hitters down here. Cool? Love this drill. It gets the quick footwork going fast. We've done this in our club with seven-year-olds with Nerf balls. It's not that pretty. What do you, I mean, this is called crazy warm-up. I think I think Nerf balls is crazy warm-up. We call it the drill where you call zero one two three three at our club. They all know what that means. Okay, next let's move on. I'm, I'm putting this into the warm-up category of this practice. Uh, Scott and Lindsay, why don't you do this one? Lindsay, this is going to be the one where Scott's going to hit you. You're going to be at the net. He's going to be at the baseline. You're going to give her two volleys. Once she hits two consecutive volleys, back to you. You throw up a nice, easy lob. Lindsay goes back, and then you give him two consecutive volleys. Remember this one? Very cooperative. Now, the title of the presentation is Keeping It Real. The way I used to do this is, in practice, is... Then she would come up and I'd say, okay, this I hit a few volleys for a while. And then, you know, after three or four minutes, I'd say, okay, now this side come up and hit volleys for you know, three or four minutes. It's, this is far more realistic with regards to tennis movement as opposed to just having one person up there standing and hitting volleys for a while. I'm not saying there's not a place for that, but this just gets moving. Just go ahead. Let's get all four of you going. Okay, all four of you going. I love this one. And you can make it, I made it two just for time. You can make it three, four, five. I don't care what it is. Also, you've heard a lot about quick start, 60 foot courts. You heard Matt's um, terrific presentation before this. Do this with the 60 foot court. Do it with a 36. It works. Maybe not doubles. But it works. Everything we're doing today, you can shrink down and make it work with any level. Use nerf balls, anything you want. The other thing I'm stressing here, keeping a realistic practice, in my opinion, when your season starts, if you're a coach, when your season starts, and you're into it, it's, it's not the time. I'm not teaching you today how to hit backhands and how to hit forehands and how to teach those shots. The season is where you teach them how to play. You teach them how to play with what they have. Okay? It's, it, it, it drives me nuts sometimes when I see a season to start and uh, coaches changing grips and uh, swing patterns and things like that. Again, I'm sure there's exceptions. But once the season starts, they've got what they've got. Okay? Um, another thing, you guys, you guys can stop. You want to set a tone, you want to set a plan for everybody. It may be a team thing. It may be that the goal for the lesson, for the whole practice, is that the last 15 minutes is going to be as good as the 15 minutes. Maybe the theme is uh, approach shots. I don't know, take it on the rise. But you don't have to have a team theme. You can have one for Tony, one for Lindsay, one for Scott, one for Rob. They all have their individual things they want to work on. I really think that's important. That before the practice starts, they know <coughs> what their individual goal is for the end, for the end of the lesson. Uh, three rules of practice that I go through. Everything, no out ball will be played out of the air um, ever. Okay? I really believe you that in practice, you can do your matches. Now that we never play a point with the ball lying on the court anywhere during practice. Get rid of it. All this stuff was instilled in me by a run hours at Vincent University when I played college tennis there. Most of the foundation of what I do is just from Ron. Um, and the other one is, and this, this rule will change you all practice. No ball ever bounces twice. That's it. No ball ever bounces twice. You, you put that rule and ignore all the other stuff, and, and your practice is souped up. And again, as a coach, you have to, you have to enforce that. You've got to be on it all the time and watch it. You can't run a realistic practice. You're not constantly looking for those little things. It's a lot of work. OK, let's get into some rally drills. Cool? Okay, what we're going to do, I just want y'all to rally across the court. Okay, just rally across the court. A few more balls, tell me. Alright, this is all cool. Again, there's a place for this, it's fine. But at the beginning of practice, I like to run everything at an exaggerated pace. At an exaggerated pace, okay? To speed it all up. One of the things we do to uh, help out with backswing and uh, 
think Lindsay just did this last week in the club. I want everybody here right now, all four of you, you're going to take two back swings before every shot. You got it? Two back swings before every shot. It looks funny. So people watching from the window of the club, see and say we think we're teaching very strange things. I want to take two back swings, and the whole reason is just at the very beginning of practice to stress early preparation. And again, it's an exaggeration drill. If we do this for a few minutes, once we get rid of it, I always say I still want you to do two swings. Just get rid of the second one. Their preparation is usually earlier. It works. So those two swings, still two swings. <clears throat> Alright, forget the two swings, just moving on. Now alternate forehand backhand. Forehand backhand, guys. Yeah, Nine the same shot twice. The other thing that I want to happen, I want to get keep this real. I don't want Rob hitting to Lindsay to her forehand and then to her backhand, to her forehand and then to her backhand. No. You may have heard of Bill Tim talk about his stuff. Uh, uh, real, uh, realistic fanaticism about targets. <laughs> Lindsay should be hitting it right back in the same spot every time. Rob should have to move around her shot. She shouldn't have to move it. So just alternate forehand back in, forehand back in. I don't know if you all heard Matt, that just spoke before this. He brought in he brought in some cereal for everybody. And milk. Isn't that cool? If you want it. I'm serious. It's right back there. It's a little milk. So then we speed it up a little bit more. Okay, again, exaggeration technique. Oh, I'm just like, I'm just going to put it on this side to save the time. Hopefully y'all have done this before. Again, everything I'm doing is stolen from somewhere. So they're going to hit the ball, and then they're going to run around after every shot. Cool? Go ahead. I should have brought that. My brother had a beer on the court yesterday. And uh, he said, I should have used that as my partner. He's going to hit it. He's going to get around. And at no time turning around, ever. And just speeding it up. <laughs> Again, the goal is so that when we take these away, they feel like they got tons of time, lots and lots of time. It's an exaggeration exercise. <clears throat> okay. Now they're going to chase their miss. They're going to chase their miss. They're going to rally with one ball. One ball. If they miss the ball, we'll, we'll play Alex. They're going to do whatever right now. If they miss it, if Rob hits it out, if Lindsay hits it long, they chase it. They go get it. Even if even if Rob hits it all the way in that corner, Lindsay, you do not hit him, help him out. Do not be nice to him, but make him go get it. He has to sprint to it. Okay, go ahead. Let's rob it. One ball. You miss, you go get it. No, 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 you're not a team, sorry. You're just rallying with Tony. You and Tony are a team. So what's happened right away? I mean, look at this. They don't want to go chase it. I want somebody to miss it. I want Scott. That's what I thought it was. Anyway, it's cheating the goal. You may say, well, I don't have players. I don't have players at this level. It doesn't matter. Whatever level you got, you can make this 